We have often talked about the evidence of various catastrophes that have devastated Earth. Changing the landscape in the blink of an eye and wiping out huge populations of animal species in the process. Most of this evidence comes from the entombed skeletal remains that have been uncovered across the globe. The most recent seems to be connected to the end of the Pleistocene. A lot of the evidence seems to suggest flooding on an almost unimaginable scale. New research is uncovering that around 13,000 years ago, a firestorm covered 10% of the Earth's surface. Let's dive in and find out more. Before we examine the evidence, it is important to understand what could have caused these mass extinctions around this time frame. This time frame is often referred to as the Younger Dryas. It marks the sudden and sharp decline in global temperatures. Some believe that a giant comet struck the Earth and caused the devastation we see in much of the remains. This event is referred to as the Younger Dryas event. The comet is thought to have caused widespread changes to the climate, triggering an impact winter and subsequent declines in animal populations. What is the evidence that supports this idea? There are 26 known Younger Dryas sites which contain anomalously high concentrations of platinum over much of the Northern Hemisphere. There are also finds of melt glass in Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Syria, and as we reported a while ago, in the Atacama Desert in Peru. An analysis of patterns in pollen levels also revealed that pine forests were suddenly burnt off to be replaced by poplar trees. This is a species that specializes in covering barren ground. Many rejected this theory, instead favoring the idea that the North Atlantic conveyor shut down causing drastic changes to the global temperature. Then in 2018, new evidence uncovered from ice cores, marine and lake sediments, as well as terrestrial sequences, suggested increased dust concentrations with high peaks of ammonia, which is a biomass burning aerosol. These all seem to suggest one of the largest biomass burning events at the onset of the Younger Dryas. When they examined changes in CO2 records, from the glaciers in Antarctica, they seem to suggest that this burning vent may have consumed 10 million cubic square kilometers, or about 10% of Earth's terrestrial biomass. These changes could not be explained by just the stopping of the North Atlantic conveyor. Some have suggested that the platinum discovered might have come from volcanic eruptions. There are major eruptions which occurred near the Younger Dryas onset, but no significant platinum peaks are associated with any episodes of volcanic record in the cores. Although their analysis of other metal ratios seem to indicate the impactor could have been any one of the several types of meteorites, it is inconsistent with a collision from a single type of meteorite, and instead suggests it might have come from a comet, and specifically one that was disintegrating before impact. These would have caused both aerial detonations and ground impacts from the numerous relatively small cometary fragments widely dispersed across several continents. The smoke released by the fires as well as the dust caused by the impact events would have caused a reduction in the overall global temperatures. The cooling of the upper atmosphere may have created supercooled crystals in the high atmosphere. These have high reflectivity and could lead to a sustaining high albedo layer of ice crystals causing further cooling across the globe. Let's take a little step back here. We have deposits of platinum that are not associated with volcanic activity. Ice core samples indicate high concentrations of biomass burning aerosols, and there is distinct increase in CO2 records that is not accounted for. We also have the evidence of glass shards across the globe. When we looked at the glass shards of the Atacama, we saw that in the region where the shards were found, many of the hills surrounding the area had telltale signs of triangular buttresses. Andy Hall's work indicates that these triangular formations may be caused by surface conductive faults running across vast portions of the landscape. Under normal conditions, geomagnetic events are normally discharged through the atmosphere. We normally see these in the form of thunderstorms, earthquakes and volcanoes. When the event is much larger, these circuits can overload, creating short circuits. These massive currents then cause sheets of lightning and plasma bolides, which arc through the surface conductive path above ground. 
Magnetic fields around the plasma currents induce rotation along the horizontal axis, modifying the speed of the winds. This causes the material to be blown asymmetrically, and it carves the valley longitudinally down the center of the hill. What about the fires? Any discharge event on the scales we are talking about would indeed have been responsible for vast walls of fire travelling across the globe. It is important to realise that their findings are only indirect evidence of fire. They detect the byproducts in the form of nitrates, ammonia and carbon dioxide. Is this the only way that these could be produced? Let's start with nitrates. When lightning strikes in Earth's nitrogen-oxygen-rich atmosphere, it produces a mixture of oxides of nitrogen, which form nitrous ions and nitrate ions. These eventually get washed from the atmosphere by rain. Now, normal lightning is not enough to account for this uptick, but we are not talking about normal lightning here. So the uptick in nitrates could be explained due to a massive discharge event around 13,000 years ago. Ammonia is created in the laboratory by mixing nitrogen gas with hydrogen gas at high temperatures and pressures in the presence of iron. If we assume the discharge travels partly through the surface materials, could this account for the required iron? As the discharge is occurring, temperatures and pressures will be much, much higher. We have plenty of nitrogen in the air, but not much hydrogen is present. So where could this have come from? When electric current is passed through water, it disassociates into hydrogen and oxygen. The glass shards found on the Atacama are located in what was once part of an ocean, but somehow became uplifted in some event. The dating of this event is possibly millions of years prior to the event we are considering now. But then there is also the uncomfortable problem of the agricultural beds that are located above the snow line which may suggest that they too were uplifted along with the entire plateau. This means that either modern man is much older than we acknowledge, or the uplifting occurred much more recently. Could the discharge event partly through either the shallow ocean bed or the later uplifted lake bed create the required hydrogen in the presence of iron in the rocks to create the uptick in ammonia detected in many of the core samples? From the evidence we have previously looked at, these events were not just associated with South America, but seem to have occurred right across the globe. Possibly not all simultaneously, but all part of an ongoing sustained event. Any rivers, lakes, seas or groundwater could create the required hydrogen for the production of ammonia. Further research reveals that there is a much simpler path for the production of ammonia, from the nitrates produced from the discharge. When nitrates are dissolved in water and are in the presence of a simple metal catalyst, which is then exposed to an electric current, this can cause the nitrate to undergo a process called electroreduction, forming ammonia and nitrogen as a byproduct. During the discharge event, not only does this carve the landscape with the characteristic features, but it also throws vast amounts of fine particulates into the air, which would have blocked out vast amounts of sunlight and lowered the global average temperature. Platinum would be explained by the fact that the discharge was transmuting elements along the discharge path. A long while ago, I looked at how metal veins might have been produced through discharge events. We saw that metals are often found along channels, and that along these paths we find different types of metals, often ending in the heavier metals like uranium. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.